Okay, we should be on. Just check the lights on. Yep. Okay, is it good to work for things or is it good to increase your vibration to get things? It's a really uh, interesting question and uh, probably put a lot of people off with the law of attraction people off. But anyway, um, er er I mean, everything is useful uh, to a spiritual seeker depending on where you're at. Now, for someone who's not into um, spiritual stuff, I think like the law of attraction is great. Uh, or any book on, on spirituality is great. But there, there is different, le as you raise your vibration, um, as you start to go into mystical teachings or enlightened teachings, you're starting more to, I would say, transcend things than to be in your ego and try and achieve things. Um, so you're trying to increase your vibrational level. Uh, if you're talking about A Course in Miracles, um, like Lesson 14 of A Course in Miracles was a mystical teaching for me, is like it says, um, and this is the thing, like I was talking a bit earlier about illnesses. You know, like um, when I was in my addict, if I had, you know, if I had an illness, I would probably spend hours on the internet, on Google, f figuring out like what's the best Amazon herbs and what's the best therapist in London to, and find out, you know, and do like hundreds of hours of research. But with, the, when, you, when you're looking at something like A Course in Miracles, like Lesson 14 of A Course in Miracles is more about transcending what you see as a problem in the world and raising your vibration. So it'd be more like, as Lesson 14 of A Course in Miracles says, God did not create cancer. So it's not real. If you read Lesson 14, God did not create it. It's not real. So rather than be in my ego and achieve an outcome and find an outcome while I still have an ego, like for me, it's like more like Course in Miracles has disappeared that you have a problem and see what happens. I'm not saying that I'm not against. I'm, I'm t I mean, I, t I do understand, you know, also I would agree with do the Course in Miracles and do anything else you think is useful. And I've done a Course in Miracles and taken my medication and seen the doctor. But for me, my main focus is doing the, the enlightenment work and doing anything in the physical world which seems appropriate, but not f focusing on that to be the solution. So, you know, I'll take a vitamin, I'll take my medication, but mainly my main focus is on disappearing the problem from my consciousness so that then allow grace to come in. So, first of all, there's the thing, um, you know, um, it'd be interesting to see, like achieving an outcome. First is like, I often try and, at different levels of consciousness, you, you are trying to achieve an outcome. And that outcome will be a reflection of your level of consciousness. If I can make a, make a joke, probably at a very low level of consciousness, the thing I'd want to achieve is like a Ferrari. You know, I'd like, what I'd like to think, well, I can use mystical teachings to get God, manipulate God to give me a Ferrari. So it'd be like, well, let's visualize a Ferrari and, and visualize like I've got the feeling of a Ferrari and I'll spend probably like hours and hours trying to manifest a Ferrari. And that's like, that's okay. Yeah, at that level of consciousness, there's nothing wrong with, with trying to manifest a Ferrari or a million pounds winning the lottery ticket. But as you dissolve, as you dissolve, uh, as you dissolve the ego, the intentions, the alignment of what, what, is, what one sees as, uh, shall we say, spiritual and what is more ego-based uh, it, it shifts, you know, so that, that shifts as one is doing the spiritual work and at each level, one's out. as you go to more advanced levels, it's more, I, I would say more, it's increasing one's vibration and transcending the thing, uh, transcending the data or the experience of what seems to be wrong in the world and then allowing miracles to unfold and that's the, the process that comes at higher levels of consciousness. So, and that's the, that's the method I prefer. I mean, there's so many different spiritual paths, but the one I prefer is like, okay, if there's a problem in the world, what's triggering me that I perceive a problem in the world? What's my perception? Is this person wrong? Have I, have I not got enough money? Uh, have, I, have I got like a headache? Okay, well, let me cancel my belief in headaches. Let me go to the observer of the headache. Let me disappear it until it doesn't exist in my consciousness, in the moment-to-moment -moment existence. My experience is usually like kidney failure, as soon as it didn't exist in me, it was like I had a transplant. As soon as asthma didn't exist in me, 
I was discharged from the asthma clinic. As soon as gout didn't exist in me, I was discharged from the rheumatology clinic. So as I disappeared these things from my consciousness, it also seemed that those things disappeared. Those potential problems disappeared in my, in my life. And for me, it's like I want to go to the more and more accessing, accessing the infinite. For anyone who's had mystical spiritual experiences, it's kind of obvious to me, like I had a white light spiritual experience and a near-death spiritual experience, that the power is in releasing the ego. Like when I was in the when I was in a white light spiritual experience, um, okay, I can share it, share something. It was like, it was so transformative. I saw a spiritual teacher of enlightenment and, um, and I was so frightened to see him because I was afraid of losing my ego. That's the truth, you know, I didn't want my, there was a great fear and I had a gout attack. Um, I had a gout attack on the day and this thought like, like cancel the appointment, don't go, don't go. And it was, my ego was in, it blew up a, you know, a huge, uh, horrific pain in my feet, but something told me, an intuition said, you'll miss your chance. So I went, I hobbled along, and this guy asked me, and I, I'd been doing this, what I call the observer practice he was teaching, called self-inquiry. Let's keep going to the observer of what I think I am, and being in the witnesser of that. And he said, well, he just said to me, like, uh, you know, where are, you know, basically I'm paraphrasing, where are you, what are you? I said, oh, at the moment with my observer practice, I feel like there's a witnesser behind me that's watching everything. And he just asked me, well, what's, what's watching the witnesser? And then the whole world disappeared, and it was like an experience of infinite light and power. There was no me, there was no thought, there was nothing. It was just infinite power on an incredible level. The only crude analogy I could say was, imagine being in the sun. Could you be in the middle of the sun and experience a shadow? you cannot experience, this world could not exist in there, no thought, no individuality, no this or that, no colour. The intensity of light was infinite and it would be impossible for anything to exist in that light. And I realised actually what was that was the absence of identification with this world in any form. No identification with thought and the power, and that, it seemed the impossible happened, a thought arised and I came back in a state of infinite bliss. But you know, the, the gout, the horrific pain, was completely gone, and uh, I was in a state of I was in a state of bliss to ecstasy. No body, no identification. That much light comes in. For me, that power is much more powerful if that radiates out into the world than me um, radiating out, you know, clever teachings like forgive your neighbour. If I say forgive your neighbour, but I'm not at that level of power. It will have an effect on others, but they'll have to apply the work themselves. But that power is like a grace that, that, is, that is so powerful to have that light emitting. Even for me, I think it's really good, but even, you know, like if Buddha was, if Buddha was in, the next, in the next room and, there was a, and I knew he was at the highest level of enlightenment and someone was giving a great spiritual talk on what is the ego, in, I don't know, central London, I'd prefer just to sit next to Buddha, even if he's not teaching anything, to be in that presence. Um, um, okay, so, so, yeah, it resolves, like, what is a thing? I mean, for me, it's like, I just want to dissolve my ego. That's the only thing. I don't really have, I mean, if I say, like, is, if my ego has an outcome, like, it'd be nice to win the lottery, I'd probably say more like, well, what's observing? is the observer of wanting to win the lottery, wanting to win the lottery. And when I go into the observer, like, see, when you're going, going into the infinite now, now is enough. I don't know if that makes sense. Like now, there is no thought for a next being better than now. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm in addiction, it's like, now is not enough, I can't wait to buy, get a donut. You know, now is not enough. Or if I was to feel lonely, in the now, then it would be like, I need a girlfriend now. Like, let me go to the next moment and figure out how to get a girlfriend. So now is never enough. In the in, but in the infinite, now is enough, and the head goes silent, because you're in the infinite now. The ho it's called the holy instant. So the, ho the Course in Miracles says the holy, meaning this instant is holy, it's enough. It does, it's not in separation. When I identify with my thoughts and my body, I feel separated. I have a sense of separation and I need something more. My ego is active. I feel separated in the now. My ego says, what do I need to get 
so that now will be enough. If, do I need to get a donut? Do I need to get a girlfriend? Do I need to get more money? So now is not enough when I feel a sense of... When I'm holy in the now, i.e. there's wholeness or oneness, that feeling of separation has dissolved, then the, the ego goes more or less nearly silent. There is not, there's not a need for the ego to say, oh, now is not enough, you need a donut. Now is not enough, you need a girlfriend. Now is not enough, you need more money. That dissolves, and in that field, anyone who's been in these miraculous flow states, just being in that presence, everything arrives miraculously, synchronistically, without the ego needing to say, now is not enough. Mm. Anyone who's been in those flows, like every moment is exquisite. And everything is provided. But as soon as I'm identified with my thoughts and my body, I feel this sense of separation. I am not in the holy instant. I'm not in the eternal now, whatever you want to call it. I'm not in the flow. I'm not in divine grace. Then the ego starts to talk. You know, now would be better with a donut. You know, so now would be better with a girlfriend. Now would be better if your bank account was a bit higher. So that feeling of separation starts to, to do. But anyone who's been in those flow states, those great states, they're far better than being in your ego with now not being enough and your ego trying to figure out a way of, this is answering the question on um, achieving outcomes. So for me, I guess if there was an outcome, but it's not really an outcome, it's not, not to be in my head, it's to be in the infinite grace as, as often as possible. So that's the deletion of outcomes. But that's not to say different levels of consciousness is integrous to be pursuing outcomes. Um, okay.